who have called us to know you, led us to trust you, and bound our life with yours. Surround this child with your love, protect it from evil. Fill it with the will and receive it into the family of your womb so that it may walk with us in the way of faith and grow in the knowledge of your spirit. Ashe, there is no divine intervention sweeter than creativity. The bearer of being a mother on father time which controls her body, disregarding the life of another, a child, while sweeping away her veil that holds the key to her tears, sun quietly rolls the train of her wedding gown, but one tear manages to slip from the lock and burst with such atomic energy, burning her face, yet another marriage that has met the season end. The day is shorter like quicksand, sand leaves dancing in color, pink and blues, pink and blues, orange and reds. The day is shorter like quicksand, sand, black Icarus, it is you, born in November. There is no divine intervention sweeter than creativity. My name is Icarus, born on summit what is now 30 Beacon Way in Jersey City. Sunshine pierces the darkness here. The moon black and white tucks still. Life does not make any effort to be key to lock of sun. Do you feel the chill in your funny bone? The day is shorter like quick sand sand. I cannot recall the last time I saw the sun and the entirety of her rawness joy and agony. The day is shorter like quicksand sand. I was born to fly. At 26, afraid to scaffold the towers of heaven, sunshine pierces the darkness here. Hair makes quick like silver and disappears. Gums pulsate like trigger fingers. Starvation travels from brain to stomach that touches the back of another hungry slave. Ancestors, where are you? Ancestors, where are you? The day is shorter like quicksand said. My father imprisoned by King Willie Lynch of Virginia within the walls of his own invention. The labyrinth, the day is shorter like quicksand sand. But the craftsman vows to break those shackles of dead ends by traveling back to the center. Flash. My first November on Earth, he made two pairs of wings by mounting feathers, two by two on two, wooden frame with wax of shame, guilt, divinity, knowledge, imperfection, logic, no telling of alcoholism or trauma. I was gifted with one pair. Sunshine pierces the darkness. Here, the sun and moon out of orbit, spinning about with lost stories, pus-filled secrets, bitterness, Resentment in the middle, I must make like the speed of sound fizzle, pop, and burn on starry nights alone because being myself is a death sentence. I come to myself in the night and say, Who are you, Black Icarus? I come to myself in the night and I say, Who are you, Black Icarus? In the year 2007, on the 20th day of June, I will make like the speed of sound fizzle, pop, and burn pirouettes around the sun for spring is passing quickly rebirth strikes like love and brings up everything other than itself a monster that wraps itself in percolating skin hides of you in the year of 2007 on the ninth day of june in harlem i collide with this thing that is made of lead copper brass steel lead copper brass Steel, lead, copper, brass, steel. One exit wound, one collapsed lung, two fractured ribs, two pints of blood erased like the sound of whispering footprints in the sand. Still the day is shorter like quicksand sand. Sunshine pierces the darkness here. Still the day is shorter like quicksand sand. My father visits me in tune with bullet orchestra. Lead, copper, brass, steel. Lead, copper, brass, Steel. On the 20th day of June, I do not fly to the sun. Sunshine pierces the darkness here. I lay awake, cry many nights, curse the God in my skin. Sunshine pierces the darkness here. The headless gunman gallops on his charse and shoots me down in front of the sun again and again in my dreams. Still the days shorter like quicksand sand. I never really knew who Black Icarus was to begin with. Still the days shorter like quicksand sand. In the year of 2007, in September, I studied the art of creative writing at a college institution. Still the days shorter like quicksand sand. 
three years later, at the institution, I meet divine mother in the faces of many. I come to myself in the night and ask, who are you, Black Icarus? I come to myself in the night and ask, who are you, Black Icarus? I had written many star of poems, borrowed the dreams of these people for offering of survival until Divine Mother said, fly, Icarus. So what if you fly too close to the sun and the wax melts? Sunshine pierces the darkness here. There is no divine intervention sweeter than creativity. The bearer of being a mother, a father kind, which controls her body, disregarding the life of another child while sweeping away her veil that holds the key to her tears. Sun quietly rolls the train of her wedding gown, but one tear manages to slip from the lock to burst in such a comic way, burning her face. Yet another marriage that has met the season end. The day is shorter like quicksand sand. The leaves dancing in color, pink and blues, pink and blues, orange and reds. The day is shorter like quicksand sand. Black Icarus, it is you in November. There is no divine intervention sweeter than creativity. I flew to the sun many times without any recollection of leaps and bounds again and again. Sunshine pierces the darkness here. I realized that I was born with my own set of wings. It was the best, it was best that I let the wax melt. Sunshine pierces. I have my own labyrinth to bear. One I created with my own bare hands that was fused with the dead ends of my mother, father, and ancestors. You have your own labyrinth. Show your wings. Fly. You have your own labyrinth. Show your wings. Fly. In the blink of an eye, I will make like the speed of sound. Fizzle, pop, burn in a starry morning sky right before the sun and plunge to my belt in the sea because she will catch me after my final miracle. Fly, Black Icarus. Fly, Black Icarus. Fly. I will be waiting for you on the other side of sunflower skies. Fly, Black Icarus. Fly. 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 Um, so yes, that was quite a lot to digest, a lot of metaphors, but um, if you do have free time, you can all look up the story of Icarus, Greek mythology, uh, which was a very great story that I enjoyed, and I'm rummaging through my notes, and we have next the Peers, Ed Educating Peers program, and I will read to you their uh, bio. And so there's a number of Peers educators that are here with us. <clears throat> Glenn Breaker, Ricardo Bluford, Shalisha Cook, Henry Espinal. The Peers Educating Peers program was founded by Dr. Jen, John Sherry, excuse me, that's how we're um, facilita facilitated now, excuse me. <clears throat> Sherry in 1995 to bring awareness to a variety of social issues, both on the New Jersey City University campus and its surrounding community. Through presentations and information tables, PEP seeks to shift perspectives challenge social norms and provoke thoughts on various social issues such as racism and multiculturalism, substance abuse, uh, LGBTQIA plus awareness. Today, four members of the PEP program will be doing a performance piece titled Rage, Rebellion, and Rising. And that is our theme for the Left Forum. If you've all been looking at your programs and planners and running around, so PEP, if you all can come up, and we all can get a round of applause. Can y'all hear the sound of my voice? So this upcoming July, myself, yes, truly, we'll be turning 19 years old. Yes. I'd like to tell y'all something about that. Coming into that age, I started to have a connection and be comfortable with my true identity, which has so many layers. Black, queer, non-binary, feminine, those are the main four. 
embrace mm -hmm. it. Speak Those it first 18 years, however, were not the case. Oh no, honey. It seemed like all those years I spent following this handbook of what it's supposed to be or how it's supposed to act being a black man. And you know what? After those years, I'm not even a man. But you know what? I've, all those years, my, my true identity has been trying to come out. Ooh, it's been trying to come out. But see, like, items in storage always been laid down, shut down, and locked to the point where I have a key. I can't even find the key. Oh. Mm -hmm. But now I've found that key, I locked it, search everywhere. This is search everywhere for my soul, and I have found it, made that connection. And now my spiritual being is telling me that it's time for me to stop my rebellion. Say it again. right. It is time for me to stop my rebellion. Mm -hmm. See, for whatever is me wearing pants or skirts, whatever is me wearing crop tops or baggy jeans, baggy, baggy shirt, baggy jeans, or a dress, whatever is me wearing Capri's, shorts, or Daisy Dukes. Where was me wearing my short 4C natural hair? Or me walking the 22 inch Brazilian street mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where was me, where was my Adam's apple getting snatched? Where was me having my chest bigger? Where was me having a curvier body? Whatever that looks mm -hmm. like, it is time for me to rebel. And mm -hmm. see, this rebel or not consists of me stressing the care of the white cis hetero male mm -hmm. has to say about me. This would not consist of me self-sabotaging. It would not consist of me falling into my depression, my anxiety, because I feel like I don't belong as a society. Mm -hmm. See, this, this, society, this rebellion would not consist of me being quiet. Like my voice, it would be louder than any gunshot. It would be louder than any bomb ever fell in this in this soil. Oh, this would let me tell you what this rebellion would consist of. It would consist it would consist of me stunting like shit. It would consist of me. It would consist of me standing in my own two feet, speaking out whatever I need to speak out. It would consist of me being myself. It would consist of me having questions about the society. It would consist of me questioning or why we give communism such a bad name, but we give capitalism a pass, but give neoliberalism valid Victorian. It would consist of me screaming and shouting and writing and, and, and badly singing about why the fuck y'all keep killing my trans and cis black brothers and sisters. Yeah. It would consist of me, it would just consist of me standing here. It would consist of me, it would consist of me taking control of my voice. It would consist of me, it would just consist of me being present. It would consist of me being present. My name is Glennifer, and y'all will experience my rebellion. Y'all will experience it. Y'all will experience me standing my own two feet, wearing no shoes, wearing high heels, or wearing sneakers. Mm -hmm. This shit, with this shit, will visualize me being the HBIC head bitch in charge, being the leader, being a formation of my own life and my own voice. I have always been the good boy that my family has expected of me. I have always been the man that society has expected of me, of what it means to be a man. I used to drink to cope with my feelings. 
and I would just hold in all my depression, all my sadness, all my hurt. I would just act like if everything was okay. My family would ask me, are you all right? I would say, yeah, I'm okay. Breakups didn't phase me. Arguments in my home didn't phase me. Everything that happened in the streets around me didn't phase me. The violence, the gunshots, the bullying didn't phase me. The reality is I feel. I feel rage. I feel, I feel, I feel depression. I feel sadness. I feel joy. I feel happiness. I feel a full range of emotions. And I'm tired of suppressing myself. I'm tired of numbing myself so that everyone else can feel a lot better. So everyone can feel like everything is okay when it's really not. But the more that I start stepping into my power, the more that I start embracing the person that I want to become, and healthy Afro-Latino male of color, the lonelier that I feel. The more distance I feel from my family, the more distance I feel from my friends, the more that I get that you're different now. You're not how you used to be. You're speaking up a lot more. You're not coming out to drink with us. Why aren't you in the club with us? It's the same thing. I'm tired of numbing myself. I'm tired of bringing myself down. I'm tired of suppressing who I want to be. I'm tired of not speaking up and being the person that I know that I should be. I'm tired of just playing myself small, making myself feel worthless when I know I'm not. I choose to speak up. I choose to let myself be heard. Because if my community cannot be heard, then I will voice what my community is feeling, if that's what it really takes. I will voice the pain that I've gone through. I will voice the pain that we are going through. But I refuse to remain silent anymore. I refuse to be oppressed. Soy Afro-Latino, and that's who I am. So if I asked you what the revolution looked like, I might get a hundred different answers. Some people might say there's no need for a revolution at all. I'm here to tell you the revolution will not be televised. Instead, it will be posted, hashtag, and retweeted. <laughs> it will be expressed through poetry, prose, and lyrics. The revolution is me and my voice. How does that sound? No is not a choice when the only option is choosing to be yourself. Know that the revolution doesn't look like the war-torn war -torn battlegrounds of picket signs and riots that they try to depict on media, no. The revolution is love. The revolution is community. The revolution is art and the revolution is healing. If the revolution was taught in classrooms, we would all be brilliant because then we would know it's not the leader, it is the collective that makes the decisions. So the time is now. The time is now. Know that standing here, my black life matters, my queer life matters, my body image matters, my female life matters. Know that I'm standing here carrying all these identities into one. It is not fair that I have to pick a door just to choose a struggle because we are all struggling together. And in order to come up through this revolution, we have to stand together, all oppression and all identities. Because there is no single issue. There is no single story. Know that I didn't choose the revolution, the revolution chose me. And the truth is, how can you be standing next to me feeling free when I'm struggling? I 
am a black, queer woman. And I am tired of people telling me that racism does not exist. You're not gonna sit here and tell me that every day I wake up in this skin and feel like I don't belong here and that that's not a problem. It's not about colorism, it's not about sexism, it's about racism. I ask a question to y'all. How would you feel if you're in a classroom and you see your ancestors hanging from trees and then you wake up in 2016 and you see the same exact thing going on? How would that make you feel? But at the same time, I don't even care about what you feel. It's always about what you feel. Who was there when my ancestors were laying on the floor dying? When they were beaten? When they were whipped? When they were shackled? When they were chained? And then who is gonna be there in the future to tell those same kids of those, that generation afterwards that you will still have that same struggle. It will look different. I don't understand why people feel like it's okay to categorize every black person that gets upset as an uncivilized, angry black person. Well, guess what? I feel rage. I am angry, I feel pain, and I am still a bomb ass black woman. <laughs> I am tired of feeling like I have to be silent or go into places and articulate myself one way in order to be seen as a person. You do not know my struggle hand in hand with who I am. So yes, I might go in a classroom and I might speak one way but that does not mean that you have the right to tell me that makes me who I am. How many people in this room can say that they know what their, the language their ancestors spoke? Or the country that they lived in? I don't have that privilege. And I know a lot of people don't have that privilege. So tell me, was that because of colorism and sexism or was that because of racism? So many times people have told me that I need to look at the bigger picture, that I need to be more compassionate. And I always respond and tell them, I'm trying. Because realistically, I cannot forgive without going through the motions of feeling the pain. So yeah, there are days when I get up and I see white people and I don't want to be around them. Because I can only imagine what my ancestors went through or how they felt. Who cared about their feelings? Who told their stories? Who made sure their children were okay? Who took care of them? So why should I take care of people who robbed me of that experience? But I also know that my ancestors every day tell me I got you. I never walk alone. I never go anywhere in a place alone. My ancestors, they got me. And even though throughout my process, as an activist, as a student, as a woman, as a person of color, I feel lonely, they told me that it might have started with me, but it will end with us. Because no revolution can be without its community. My name is Glenn, or Glennifer, I don't care. <laughs> um, so um, I am a freshman and sophomore, and I'm New Jersey City University. I've been with years educated for years, and I'm a whole freshman. <coughs> More to come. <laughs> yes. Hi, y'all. Here we go, hey. microphone. <laughs> I'm going to project. Um, my name is Henry, and I am a senior now. So, hey, almost there. Almost there. And, I have been for I have been with the Peers Educating Peers for four years now, so my time is coming up, but doesn't mean that my activism is about to end. So hi, my name is Rakaya. I'm a grad student at New Jersey City University. 
and this is my second year in peers educating peers, and this is my first year of being activated as an activist. Hi, I'm Shalisha. Um, this is my first left forum. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I've been with the Peers Educating Peers program for two years. Um, and also, I am currently like a junior slash senior. I'm going into senior miss soon <laughs> at New Jersey City University. Um, and I'm studying uh, sociology um, with an emphasis on. Um, Youth and Family Services. Thank you to the Peers Educating Peers Program who uh, brought us spoken word and also a sense of monologue. That's also very important to our inner monologue. The dialogues that we have with ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis that sometimes we do not share with friends or family or sometimes we barely want to share with ourselves. This is like my one a day, the vitamin, if you will. Um, and it's titled Path of the Warrior. Consult the Oracle for everyday guidance on your life journey uh, by Lucas Estrella Schultz. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, so I am going to read a passage from this. This will be for all of us as a community, as we've heard a number of times throughout uh, the monologue and the spoken word piece, community, unity, all coming together, and also acknowledging differences and sameness as well. So a moment. And also, I'm just feeling out the space as well. It feels like folks are tired, a little groggy. Mm -hmm. Are we agreeing to that? No, <laughs> yes. I don't see any head nods. How long have we been here? Since 7 a.m.? So, no? Five. No? I saw some people had a bus out front. Uh, that was interesting. So these people probably have traveled um, from another state. So here we are. Passage two. The warrior, the warrior awakens. On the horizon, the limit between heaven and earth blurs. On the horizon, it is impossible to discern. Before watching the sunset, I sit on a stable stone. You have been living in an unreal basis. You are in the air. All this time you have lived thinking that things were in a determinate way. You have acted accordingly, and this is right. But on the path to knowledge, the warrior must penetrate deeper and deeper inside himself and his life. On the path to knowledge, the warrior must die only to be reborn again with fresh insight. So I feel like what's being brought to us through racism is a sense of awareness and consciousness. We're all waking up to ourselves. That's very important. We want to look at our uniqueness and what it is that we bring to the world. And it's very beautiful for those of us who might not think that it's beautiful. We might not think about how beautiful we are on a... Uh, Basis. Anyway, we're going to get into our next poet, who is uh, Matt Cedillo. Um, he said that he didn't want to share his bio, but I think it's very important to talk about um, <laughs> his achievements. Uh, you know, a Grand Slam poet, which is uh, big these days. Um, back in 2011, he's also been uh, published with Mary Baraka. Uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti, Jack Hirschman, and Luis Rodriguez. Cedillo is a frequent guest on numerous programs on KPFK 9.07 FM. That's an interesting number. And has also been featured twice on Radio Free Atlanta 8.93 FM. I think that's how much money I have in my wallet. An interview with an excerpt of his work was featured in a story that appeared in the Los Angeles Times. So before we let Matt come on, what we're going to do is we're going to crowdsource. I know you hear that term that's very techy, but we're doing this in a humanistic way. I need to feel some of the energy in the room because I feel like it's very low. Again, I feel like folks are groggy. The coffee is not working. I could tell you that right now. The coffee is not working. So again, I go by the name of Black Daya. Again, Daya means day, but it also means my struggle and the struggle of my people and my healing and the healing of my people, and it is a community call. So, whenever you see 
my fist, we are going to shout Daya. And I don't mean Daya. <laughs> like we're dying a slow death, working at a nine to five job. We want it to be grand like Hunger Games. No? Maybe. Um, okay, we can go there. Are we ready? Daya! Alright. <laughs> Someday I'll love the town, Port Apache, Dirty Harry, John Wayne, Blackface, Minuteman, Morning Hand, Gone with the Wind, Breaking Bad. Washington, Redskin, Confederate flag. The sword, the dollar, the cannon, the scholar, the cavalry, and the Ivy League. History, as written by lightning, is the rising smoke of burning village. The ways and means which victors keep their victims. A frontier thesis, some notes on the state of Virginia. Extraction, expansion, the winning of the West. Lewis and Clark Smith and Weston now circle the wagon with bloodshed and slave sweat, the crack of the whip. The law of three-fifths, the crown republic of King Cotton, the intended failures of reconstruction, the housing covenants that greeted great migrations and saints and Mexicans and poor Mexico. So far from heaven and so close to Monroe Doctrine. To Davy Crockett. To prison industrial complex. A war on drugs is a war on our young. Bloody Christmas. Reefer Madness, 15 to life in four ounces, East Oakland, West Baltimore, South La Brea, and all over North, Plymouth Rock, Jamestown, and the Rio Grande. Stolen lives, stolen land. It's not a book that some of the hearts of the commercial groves were painting was only to unfold from the pages of Secret Gardens, the Red Front Groves, but not I. See, I come from the stock of star-eyed astronauts who reap the night sky with big dreams and wide eyes always running down the Devil's Highway through occupied America on the way back to the house on Mango Street. Mm. All those other books she didn't want to read. Mm -hmm. Raised on handball off the back wall of a panaderia born east of the river post Mendez versus Westminster, one generation with red lines. And diplomas that were signed that those dreams in that skin need not apply. See, I come from struggle. And if my story offends you, it's only because you made the mistake of seeking your reflection in my self-portrait. See, this was not about you. So some are born of the common core, whose reflected faces grace the pages of doctrines are discovered, ages to be explored. Where old world hardships crash against new shores, New England, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, for others pushed off Turtle Island, Aslan, do not call this brown-skinned immigrant. Child of the sun, son of the conquest, me got no blood, when the veins east side of Los Angeles, do not tell him what native tongue and song would best be sung, do not tell me who I am. Because I was raised just like you. Miseducated in some of those very same schools off lessons and legends of honest Indians and Christian pilgrims and a nation of immigrants all united in freedom. That is until they pulled aside my white friend, pointed directly at me and said, Scott, I judge you by the company you keep and you spend your time with this. That's the same old story since 1846. The adventures of Uncle Sam, the stick-up man, a wet bag. Show me your papers, now give me your labor in the melting pot. Was ever made for the hands of cleaning? The American dream has always come at the expense of those who talked it in. You don't know that, because you don't teach it. I could write you a book, but you won't read it, so you know what this is about you. In 1492, and the Treaty of Guadalupe, and California missions, and Arizona schools, and these races to try to erase us as we raise their kids in cities that bear our names. But you're gonna learn something today from Ferdinand to Minuteman, from Arpaio to Alamo, from Popo Burio, Soy Joaquin to the Indian that lives in me from Mexico 68 to the missing 43 that try to bury us, that didn't know we were seeds. We never mind, Leno Strike, Plan de Ala, Rio Zapata, Joaquim Herrera, Las Adelitas, Brown Beresi, Zapatistas from Richard Nixon, the third Napoleon, from Peckinpah to Houston, from Lone Star Republic to Christopher Columbus, all the way down to Donald fucking Trump. We didn't cross the borders. The borders cross us. Who are you calling immigrants? Pilgrim. Oh. Here's the nation. Package complete. Police escort skinheads and hooded clansmen to March 8 down public streets. Well, those very same police, quotas to me, cannon fire on black boys in hoodies, and Mexicans kids with shaved heads. They are killing our kids. Well, half the nation applauds in the homeland's defense because they think, they think that a white woman's purse has more value than a black or brown boy's life. 
Here's a nation. Hellbent. One percent. Genocide, pipeline from underfunded schools to overcrowded prisons. They know Gingrich, our kids, they fit for nothing but a life in and out of the system, stripped of innocence, guilt by birth certificate students. Quarters before children. Children, suspects before students, young girls. Wars before victims. Here's a nation that eats its young. This is not a democracy. This is not a republic. This is an open air prison, an industrial scale plantation. Anything and everything you've ever gotten from this system has a mathematical assessment, a calculated equation set to the algorithm of the cost of doing business. Keep your hands moving, stomach consuming, mind functioning within the narrow confines of your job description. Blood soaked country, forged in genocide, built on slavery by den of thieves, posing as Messiah, the Constitution, Thomas Jefferson, Jefferson Davis, white Jesus, Western civilization, civilized mission, mission accomplished, manifest destiny, American exceptional, the peculiar institutions, which like race and degradation, the plantation, anthem, the slave ship, the bicentennial. Go back to the slave with the feet of lay liberty, the dirt poor, dead tired, whole child liberty, the popular tenements of Ellis Island to Arizona's blood filled cold field fields. The traffic in brown skin, flesh, but ah, man, I've been, I did this yesterday. Ah, uh, brick by brick, brick by brick, inch by inch, slave by slave. Here is a nation. There are its chains keep you in place. Watch power, overseer, and you kill her. You need plus because he is a bitch act like an inch of national defense. Which of you was then against it? Which hunt for was alone? Who said that? Who did that? Which side are you on? Here is a firing squad. They killed that comet. They killed Tecumseh. The they killed Rietta. They killed John Brown. They killed that Turner, they killed the Rosenbergs, they killed Sacco and Benzetti, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King, Cuban Salazar, they killed Fred Hampton, they were gonna kill in much the same fashion. Here are the blood soaked fields within the life of Eddie Lopez, Presidio Flores, Susie Pena, Mike Brown, Josh Harlan, Strayvon Moore, and half the nation applauded. Here is that nation. This is not a democracy, this is not a republic. This is the state of the union that are killing our children. We are a war. Call to arms. Damn it. Damn it. I don't know what it's like. So, you know, one more. Uh, my name is Matt Cedillo. I perform at universities all across the country, so I am not too shy to brag, but I ain't too proud to beg. So, if there are like <laughs> professors or students, come get at me. Um, so, last poem. I'm very fortunate that I get to do this, uh, get to move around doing these things like this, and uh, Sometimes they ask me interesting questions, interviews like, uh, how'd you get started? Who are your influences? Can you give us an example of a Latino experience? <laughs> to which I typically respond, Johnny, when I was six, I lost a tooth. And I put it on the pillow. And in the morning, I sat his game. It was gone. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> That's my Latino experience. That said, here's a poem about growing up on the east side of Los Angeles. <laughs> I was born on the east side of Los Angeles, cross tracks from bandit steel, industrial, petrified forest. Across the steps, a giant green top protected customers and gossipers, our abuelitas from Razor Sun to Bombs of Birds. It spoke Spanish, sold mangoes, papayas, and cherries, my favorite. As a child, I can never quite make the connection between the broken, empty bottles across the steps and the broken, empty men poured out the rust factories from across the tracks. So my cousins and I would gather rocks of dirt aimed directly for the head, and the men would yell back something like, What do you damn kids know about life? And we yell back, Take that, drunks! That was fucked up. But that's just how it was. Growing up, where Valley climbs up and over me, Soto. El Sereno. In the 1950s, my mother's father, technician by trade, by birth, the prince among men. And a backwards king that held him back with the radiance of his unapologetic brown skin raised a family of six on a single income. Here's hard, fought, genius, in older than my mother's woman. December 18th, 1981, after months of fear and absence, my father makes his return. My aunt moves to hostile bed. She does not want to see you. You know what you did. It would be best for everyone if you were just a my mother holds her newborn, her first and only son. There's a pain in me, older than my father's blood. As a child, I could never quite make the connection 
between his fingers around my throat and the sorrow in his chest, a suffering older than my father's bones. His father's whiskey. Grandfather's short temper, long-lived legacy to a time history does not care to remember because beatings are not fit for scrapbooks and genealogies of shame rarely make their way to the oral tradition of campfire. There's a burning in my heart. The time cannot trace. Well, God from my father's, the suburbs treated me different. One day in the workforce, I told my boss last night, I met a woman, beautiful and intelligent, asked, we're at Boyle Heights, where's that? The side of Los Angeles asks, incredulous, you met an intelligent woman in East Los Angeles? Yeah. Went to slap, cavalry out of his smirk, beat the manifest destiny out of his name badge, but needing a paycheck, I stood in the weakness of silence, the pain and anguish of generations long past, alive and sickened in my chest, there is a shame attempted upon us, older than the tongues of bigots. Walked off job, marched off lot fist up for the cause of the world that has told us no, that has told us different. I've chosen yes, yes I am Chicano. Yes, Mexican. Yes, indigenous, that brown skin and bleed red. Yes, unafraid and unashamed. My passion, my potential, my intelligence. Yes, the fire in my chest. Look into my eyes and feel its strength. And yes, as a matter of fact, some of the most radiant, gifted, talented, beautiful, intelligent women I have ever met reside on the east side of Los Angeles, just across the steps from the streets where I was born. Yes, I am all of this and more. Yo soy la raza. I, like you, are made of stars. Mm -hmm. You, like me, so full of pain, are brimming with genius. Listen to no one it would make you feel different. Our arts can take you on a journey from the boogie down to Berlin, from the border to the bodega. Our style emphasizes lyricism, rhythm, and authenticity. We hail from the Bronx and have been rocking the mic since 2005. When I say people, y'all say power, people. Power. People. Power. When I say we want, y'all say justice. We want justice. We want justice. When I say we are, y'all say beautiful. We are beautiful. We are beautiful. Peace, family. So it's such a pleasure to be here with you all today. Uh, we are brothers, we are artists, we are educators, and we are totally honored to be among so many amazing artists. Please give a big round of applause to everybody. to hear from each other so go ahead and turn around and just meet somebody that you don't know right now because we're about to sing together uh, we're about to hear some poetry so <laughs>
All right, y'all. Y'all met somebody? Okay, so it's a conversation, uh, just like what you've heard so far. So if you feel so inspired, you want to snap, let's just practice that real quick. A little snap. You say, ooh. ooh. Let's get a little ah. Ah. All right. And so it's a conversation, all right? Uh, let me hear that, actually. All right? All right. <laughs> so we're going to have a little fun. Uh, and we want to hear your voice. During this piece right here, this song, Please do not be concerned about sounding good. Just uh, be concerned about sounding like yourself. All right? And so we've spoken about it so much so far, um, about our liberation being tied to the next person's liberation as well. And so we have a song for y'all. It goes, my liberation is your liberation. My liberation is your liberation. And your liberation is my liberation. And your liberation is my liberation. So let me hear the people say, let's get free. Let's get free. Say, let's get free. Let's get free. All right, I think they got it. Y'all ready? You. All right, here we go. It goes, my liberation is your liberation, and your liberation is my liberation. So let me hear the people say, let's get free. Let's get free. Say, let's get free. Let's get free. My liberation is your liberation, and your liberation is my liberation. So let me hear the people say, let's get free. Let's get free. Say, let's get free. Let's get free. One more time. My liberation is your liberation, and your liberation is my liberation. So let me hear the people say, let's get free. Let's get free. Say, let's get free. Let's get free. A Sankofa meditation, they lost soul under rotation. Put the freedom on the stations. We are forming a new nation based on justice and forgiveness and rehabilitation. They addicted to the money and they public reputation. But if you decide to share, you can join the conversation. Right. How in practice, we gon' get these reparations. It's gon' take patience, but the prophecy is ancient, cause every breath you take Come is on, a holy invitation. My liberation is your liberation. Your liberation is my liberation. So let's be the people say, let's get free. Let's get free. Say, let's get free. Let's get free. My liberation is your liberation. And your liberation is my Beautiful family, it is so good to be here with y'all tonight, this, this afternoon. This piece I want to share with y'all is called Barrio Libre, and uh, it's dedicated to all our families and all our people um, in different neighborhoods who have been um, displaced and who are being displaced. Uh, special shout out to some family we have in the building, Jessica Caremore from Detroit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's our sixth member of the Peace Public. <laughs> uh, but we know the crisis that's also going on with Detroit. And what is it, New Detroit? The, the new, the new popping hood. Yeah. Um, but uh, one, one of the neighborhoods uh, in the South Bronx where. Uh, we are from, uh, is trying to be changed into the piano district, that's what it's being called, uh, along with, with Sobro and Spaha and Gano, one of you know, famous. Wow. Um, so this is for, for our fight. Barrio Mio, Barrio Mio, Barrio Mio. Barrio mio, barrio mio, barrio mio. This is not so, bro. This is where the doñas live who give la bendición. Y si te lleva de consejo, te muere de viejo, es our educación. This is salsa con coco. So if y'all can't dance to the clave, don't even think about stepping in the bodega with a two-step on my head and because they will let you have it. <laughs> This is not a tall Starbucks smoke with caramel latte for $6.50. This is pastelitos, 
y tacos, arroz con habichuela, la botánica Santos. And so high school, the only diversity in las escuelas is when there's that one white kid in class. <laughs> Who's really Puerto Rican? <laughs> this is fathers who don't know how to show love because they've had too many affairs with tequila and corona. This is Father Alex Shapers. This is Pedro Alviso Campos. This is Juan Luis Quejera. This is Celia Cruz. This is us ready to burn down the bonds of nobles because communities don't put up borders. See, our demand for human rights is out of order. Citizenship out of order. Skin color out of order. But those in the bathroom when their shit is out of order. Because it's okay for us to be janitors and porters or serving hors d'oeuvres to tourists or reporters call us foreigners while they pay us less than seven and a quarter expecting us to find livable quarters for our sons and daughters while you try to deport us. When from Africa, you exported us. Imports in a strange place. We made it home, sort of. Still, I wonder what y'all expected for us, because we still celebrate life despite being boxed in a corner. These are your streets, our streets, and our children. And we heard it takes a whole village to raise just one. So this is our fight to make El Barrio Libre so that we can see the children of truth grow. Barrio Libre. Barrio Libre. Barrio Libre. Barrio Libre. I love that piece. <laughs> Real talk. Oh, man. Oh. That's what's up. <laughs> Uh, just want to take a moment. Just say hey to everybody. What's up? It's good to be here. It's a blessing to be in a space where the conversations are revolved around what we feel like really matters, what really affects people. Or as my boy Luke would say, using reality to keep our politics in order. I can dig it. Uh, that said, I'm going to share a piece called Alchemy that. Uh, just a reflection on the state of being black in the last three or four years. Or three or four hundred years. <laughs> I feel like the country had my mama's womb in the crosshairs. Like a line in the sand, black man, you can't cross here. Feel like I've been staring down the barrel. Feeling fresh as hell when my skin is my apparel. But it's hard to see my black pride to this American apparel. I'm a wolf in sheep's skin, I keep this anger in my marrow. Flame me from that crooked letter, I fly straight as an arrow. God's children hung from trees, so they eyes on the sparrow. But black life is geometry. You gotta learn the angles. I'm racing for my race, but kept a step behind the angle. Twice to work and no credit, trying to amplify my bankroll. Just to make rent my back bent like an ankle. But watch me turn my strife into stripes like a bangle. And ride around reckless like a teen in a rental. If there was blood on the leaves, there's still red on some green. It's been dripping from my pen and be flooding my instrumentals. Cause I decided that I don't rap no more. I play Ouija with the souls of black folk who sacrifice life to free me. Possession takes place between the kick and the bass. Can't see connections I make. For heaven's sake, I'm Stevie. But wonder what keeps me from going under is that 80s baby hustle. Newspaper and a squeegee. Cause all I do is make it dirty even when I think it's squeaky. Got poverty in my pocket. See how they see me on TV? Disrespect the way they present my residency. The more things change, but the more they stay the same. So sometimes I resent Obama's presidency. Before we get our unmentionables in a tizzy. <coughs> Before my beautiful people line up against me. Remember who your friends is and know your enemies be. I kick it to this block, rock, shock, ACDC. I feel like KRS mixed with W.E.B. The boys with my boys, like Heavy D on the CD. Uh -huh. But that strange room was painful. Like Nina singing Billy. Mm -hmm. That strange fruit still painful. <coughs> Had us acting silly. Got an angel on my back and wings spread across my city. 
because we are black history in action. So this here is the celebration. You hear the horns like a black college band graduation. If my head nods to the beat, that's the meditation. Audience response to me, that's that medication. A vaccine for this whack gene and to make this outfit look good like some black jeans. Rap fiend without fear, that's my designation. I rhyme like a rebel tribe. No reservation. I slap box with the devil, no hesitation. No pulling punches, throwing combos in bunches, giving foes concussions, there is no mercy. There's no talking. There's no parlay negotiations. But this is how we act and we ain't get reparations. So I'm Chuck D on the mic and boycotting radio stations. Hip hop is my religion, I rep that like a nation. That's peace, love, unity, cultural innovation. Even though they made us broke and try to hang us off of ropes, we still make something out of Nathan. How do we do that? It's easy. If there's black blood on the leaves, there's black blood in the trees. We in every breath you ever take. And every piece of fruit you ever hate. And I know chains take time to break, but if we wait that long, it's too late. I know chains take time to break, but if we wait that long, it's too late. Peace, y'all. Um, cool. So last November, Frank, Luke, and I went to uh, the province of Guantanamo, um, overlooking Guantanamo Bay Prison, uh, in protest of the prison and the men that are being held there, uh, many of them who are fasting and have been locked up uh, unjustly and illegally uh, for many, many years. This piece is a reflection of that, um, and I just want to uh, also bring into the space one of the groups that are central in organizing, uh, which is Witness Against Torture. Um, uh, and this piece is uh, both through the work of protesting every DC um, against the prison uh, and the trip, which illuminated many lessons for me. <coughs> Fear and hate can manipulate the mind, and those that know will never show, but they'll work it in design. Behold the ignorance of the times. Get shot or get in line. Get caught and drop a dime. A constitution's pretty, but your actions will define. It's like they don't believe that word and deed are intertwined. In Guantanamo, still detained are 107. From that number have been cleared 47, and their excuse for this abuse is still tied into 9-11. The hate-filled powerful trying to maintain their prominence. They enter the global stage with the greatest example of their incompetence. They invade the wrong country, imprison the wrong men, abuse every human right and wonder why we can't get along then. The arc of justice is a long bend. Judge, jury, and torturer. They've taken this power upon them. So I focus my spirit and pick up a strong pen. But this is only a poem. They bomb the wrong targets and say it was only their homes. They lock our brothers up and hope it's unknown. We're calling Liberty, but she don't pick up the phone. They threw her in solitary because they don't think it's torture. They say she's only alone. A US general testifies that Guantanamo prison makes the entire world unsafe, but a politician laughs in his face and says his words are mistakes. They trade world safety for political stakes. And you may wonder, what do I have at stake? It's because I've opened my eyes and I've seen the world is displaced. Because they create the systems that leave our lives shattered. And the people who are the problem reply with, all lives matter. Their intentions are suspect. When they've never lifted a finger for justice, their innocence is a new kind of avarice. 
Their hearts break for, they ignore millions of Syrians, but their hearts break for Paris. <laughs> they deny those most in need of our amnesty, further pointing out the hypocrisy of their humanity, reserved only for the select few of the human family. That's why we are witnessing this torture. Pray and take a breath. Know the root of your success before you go and cash that check. Billions in debt. Black Americans still fighting for their breath, reciting, I can't breathe, while racists make jokes about their death. State violence is worldwide. We are witnessing where it connects. In Guantanamo, where North Americans hide behind Cubans. Where the US military decides who is and isn't human. I was under the impression this country was founded to do away with this oppression. But I've learned my lesson. These rights were never meant for a man of my complexion. So I put up a black fist, because Bodega speak to me in Spanish and Delhi speak to me in Arabic. I am where humanity connects. I live where the Negro, Blanco y Taino had met, which is to say, I see with my third eye and at the same time protect my neck. The road to justice is a marathon. And what we are asking for is a step. Abolish torture. End all unjust imprisonment. Only then will the darkness lift. And we can finally wake to the truth. We are our greatest gift. All right, family. So again, thank y'all so much for, for having us here. We're so hyped to, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're so hyped to, to hear our brother Boca Floja rock in a bit. And just want to again thank all the artists who have blessed the stage and who have brought their children, each other, their ancestors. Do y'all feel that in the space right now? Woo! Do y'all feel that? So that's the power of art. Thank you for beautifully just sharing that with us and expressing that. So we know that we don't come here alone like so many have spoken on this day so far and definitely in the, this weekend. Um, so we want to sing one last song. It's called Never Alone. It's real easy. Again, don't even worry about sounding good. <laughs> but we want to hear your voice. So it goes like this. I have not come here alone. I carry my people in my bones. I have not come here alone. If you listen, you can hear them in my soul. I got that. I have not come here alone. I carry my people in my bones. I have not come here alone. If you listen, you can hear them in my soul. I have not, have not come here alone. No, 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 no. I carry my people in my social media, all that good stuff. And we also have a show June 1st with M1 from Death Press at Drum. Uh, please check that out on our social media as well. And thank y'all so much. We also have flyers. Come speak to us. We're right here in person. Would you do a favor and introduce the individual members of the group? Because oh, so sorry. Yeah. Sometimes we just rock like Voltron. <laughs> so, so my name is Frankie. <laughs> this is friends. We have Abe and Emmanuel. And our brother Luke right now is on a retreat with the organizing group. 
Thank y'all so much. We also have King, <laughs> secret member of the Peace Force. But thank y'all again so much. Thank y'all. On the corner of paranoia and gun they fought, charismatic trauma homicide homophones like he ate eight bullets and his mother's makeup cried brick stuck. There it is. Bars. See that? Bars. 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 I don't endorse alcoholism, but maybe there needs to be a little bit of a drop of something to wake us all up. But uh, anyway, we're here sober, having fun, full of light. So we're going to bring up our next artist, Boca Floja, uh, who is the founder of Quilomboarte Collective. Um, he has published his first book already. Prognosis is in the second, which is his most relevant literary work. And uh, he focuses on race politics, decolonial narrative, and blackness in the context of Latin America. Um, yes, that is a handful, a mouthful. We're here to digest it. Boca Floa, come up. Peace, family. How you feeling? Peace. Uh, give it up for all the amazing poets that were before. So I'm going to share a couple of pieces. Most of my work is in is in uh, in Spanish, uh, but I uh, have a couple of things in English as well. So I'm going to share some of that. So um, when I first came to the U.S. Um, and I grew up really connected to uh, hip hop culture, one of the words that really uh, caught my attention was the word swag. So I, I was. Uh, trying to resignify and understand a, a different different uh, concept of swag. So I, I came with this piece. Swag. Common consumers consuming the surplus vocal, the comfortable flow, crippling imagination with the portrait of mannequins, mass production, serious commodification, this is swag. Swag is Wallaby Shoes, Diaspora 2015. Swag is James Baldwin. Black Europe. Swag is 35 degrees Celsius, Asada Shakur in Cuba. Swag is December of 87, Intifada. Swag is carpal tunnel syndrome with a smile in the factory, Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. Swag is favela, Rosina, theater of the oppressed. Swag is fedora hats way before Pee Wee Herman colonized Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Swag is watermelon, Melvin Van Peebles. Swag is Oscar Lopez Rivera, Humboldt Park, Chicago. Swag is Yoruba without cultural vampires. Swag is Alcatraz, Leonard Pertier. Swag is Lisa Lisa and Cold Jam 1984 Lower East Side. Swag is Calacuta, decolonial sex. Swag is Bugalo in the hood. Swag is one on one against the homie, working class flavor. Swag is intellectual stimulation 69 with the lights on. Swag is a letter jacket redefined, Huey Newton. Swag is brown rice, brown sugar, brown people. Swag is black beans, black, my people. Swag is simultaneous orgasm, 625, Gil Scott Heron. Swag is Evo Morales with a smile at the United Nations Conference. Swag is Theophilus Stevenson left punch, Buenos Dias, Pequeña Havana. Swag is your apple bone, bonita. Swag is Watsacks, Richard Pryor. Swag is the aesthetics of hunger, Glauber Rocha. Swag is 75 years old, dancing dance on. Swag is juice bar, 11 a.m., lots of ginger. Swag is day laborer, strength, solid under the weight of recollection. Swag is bacon shark, West Indies. Swag will never be Snow White or Elvis Presley hairdo. 
Swag in this flight without one dollar. Swag is my mouth, my two step, this city, this process, this is swag. Thank you. So this is um, something I wrote about uh, living in, in the Bronx as well. So it's more like a little storytelling. And it's called Epistemology of the Doobie. And it goes something like this. This is a corner store swing. The Gemini cat haulers, primo, was good son with a Dominican accent. Arabia is purely reminiscing when he dances to the sound of merengue music like the Tigres de Capotillo, Caribbean neighborhoods. This is a concentration camp. Epistemology of the doobie, 7 a.m. called as fuck. There are unjustified syncretism. Our road to salvation and the promised land is gently sponsored by the Rockefeller Foundation. No joke. Our condition won't improve with or without Jordan shoes. There's a forbidden New York, mythical, flamboyant, erotic, and perverse. Extre extremely horrific for everything that doesn't come with a lifetime membership. They say there are lords and la ladies in Central Park. Fireflies. That's the way white folks affectionately call their kids. Not all of us can see the park at night, because we depend on the mood of psychopaths. Do the map. Stop and frisk, stop and frisk, stop and frisk. That's the mantra of animalization, and that's on a lucky day. Middle America's pathological depression easily picks up an assault rifle and loads a round of bullets killing our people in the name of boredom. Police report, victim of his circumstances coming from a dysfunctional family took his life after the incident. That's bullshit. In the swing of the hump of the hot summer hunt, the macho hollers. I want to eat you up, mama, heartbreaker. All terrain penetration, transcending gender, legitimization of masculinity on their corner street light with a cold 45 in hand. But lights off. Hyper masculinity pleases itself with a finger in the ass. As Kanye West. Complexities of the colonized manhood. In the swing of geographic displacement, we walk with a slow, absent-minded step, with the knowledge that we, work, that, that we own the night with impeccable shoes, without looking a stranger in the eye for more than two seconds. The projects, the corner, el barrio, the block, we live in war songs set up by cribs. The industry of cotton money is quite the light. They love these warriors from the Bronx that have never traveled to Brooklyn. This is the epistemology of the doobie. Thank you. So, so now the, the, the idea is kind of to uh, decentralize um, English language. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the, the opportunity to speak in Spanish. So um, if you have a question, you can ask me at the end when I'm going to be working around. So this is uh, just quick piece in Spanish and also a quick announcement. I have a couple of books and, and music as well. Or if you just want to say hi, just come close after the performance. And thanks for the opportunity. Buenos dias, America. Mi voz es en Shanghai en esta métrica colérica y es que ya me cansé de estar pletórico y exploto la oratoria. Luego la euforia por las mieles del consumo corta alas a mi gloria. Todo es cagar para engordarla. Su misión es este esclavismo postmoderno y su soñar ser un amante latino para las putas del espíritu inconcluso. El incómodo recluso de los credos en desuso. Ser el idioma de este circo taciturno. El exótico salvaje que ha logrado arremedar en los modales y servir sus comensales. Soy yo quien da señales que lo irónico es cagar en esta lucha que camina con pañales. Bendíceme de verde para escaparme de la pando y después asesinarte verde dólar en el nombre del mocambo. Mi nombre es Boca, la antítesis para esta maquinaria del júbilo ingerido, para esta muchedumbre del coma no inducido soy, de diáspora, colonia, melanina y otras rimas, zumbando cual zumbi en este mocambo, es un verano, luna fría, es espíritu sabio, sin santo, sin salario, la peste para el cacique y el verde para el erario, nuevo significado para un nuevo calendario. Buenos días, América. Thank you. Um, so thank you to Boca Blah.
uh, for bringing language into the space that's also very important, living here in America and speaking English, that is a privilege um, and it can also be very oppressive. Uh, so thank you, it's very important as a reminder. Oftentimes we may hear people speak clear English. That is a very dehumanizing uh, space to put a person in. Um, our native tongue is our native tongue. That is the language that we may dream in, cry in, laugh in. It's about humanizing. So, we got the bars on deck. Do people know what bars are? No? So bars is like the slang for hip hop. When you're coming in, and you just come in with these punchlines, and you just, just get right in it. But you know what's coming up next is a mortal technique and I'm very excited. I'm just very excited. So we're just gonna have a mortal technique. Just gonna come and he's gonna do bars for us. Y'all let this shook his hand. Thank you very much for having me here. Let's do a quick one right before my panel starts. They just brought me in here and said just gun go for it. So here we go. Imagine the word of God without religious groupies. Imagine the savior born in a Mexican hoopty, persecuted single mother in a modern manger. You crucify him again like a fucking stranger. Tears of the anger are worth more than diamonds and rubies. Imagine being locked up since juvie. Imagine changing your life and still going out like Tuki. Imagine people talking shit when they never knew me. Imagine a movie that depicted the pain of your life like them kids in Afghanistan chasing a kite. For most of the world, that's what it's like. Imagine if the woman you're supposed to love for the rest of your life is said to marry someone else at the end of the night. They say you fight the greatest jihad in your heart and your mind and fight the hardest when you start from behind. So I dream the impossible all the time. Fuck a Masonic design. America's future is mine. Repeat that to yourself. Because if our culture's a crime, them numbers tagged on your arm aren't too far behind. They can only conquer you after they murder your mind. So rise up, motherfucker, like the sign of the times. I feel my body weakening, but my spirit is fine. Ready to go to war with devils at the drop of a dime and fight with my rebel army until the stars are aligned. Because Nostradamus was a white man's prophet who predicated European supremacist logic because the pilgrims and the conquistador columns killed more innocent people than Hitler and Stalin. So I guess the fortune teller skipped an anti-Christ or two. Brother, give this to the OGs doing life with you and pray for the problems with the Pope's psychology so the Vatican will offer an apology. For what? For destroying the people's liberation theology, snatching the spirit of Jesus from people in poverty, business decisions like keeping people in prison but had the opposite effect incarcerating religion that type of crooked politics exposed on a populace is obvious if you read the Northwood documents so fuck the compliments for what I recorded and please live for revolution instead of always dying for it. Thank you. Also, I want to take a big shout out to all the people that have come here from the far away and other individuals that have come from other spaces to be in here. We appreciate it. We love y'all having here. And thank you very much for being a part of Left Forum. And thank you very much for having me here. But before I have to run out of this room to another panel and then go to another one, <laughs> our job is never done. Love y'all. <laughs> Um, but it has been an amazing journey with you all, even though we have been a little sleep and tired. Uh, coffee is not helping. But that is okay. We have been together in this space talking about art as a tool slash weapon. So your swords have now been sharpened. You shall go out into the world and remember to carry yourself with love. And as we end, I'm going to close out with passage four. The warrior shows his interior. Even if it hurts, live with the truth. This is the path of the warrior. This is the only path. The blade of the sword is sharp and cold. The hilt is rounded and warm. Only this way can I fight. Why do you wear an armor? Why do you fear so much? Nothing serious can happen to you now. Open your heart to sun and life so that the world can reflect in you. If you are embittered, open yourself. Lights will come smoothly. If you are happy, open yourself. Yourself, Light will flow smoothly. Remember, you can always choose again. You're all full of love, light, 
bursting with joy and energy right now. Just faking a little bit of energy right now. <laughs> Love you all. Go on. Have fun. You're all so awesome.